Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about some key differences between PyQt5 and PyQt6. So I get asked this question a lot on my channel. People want to know what changed, whether they should upgrade, and whether they can now actually release their commercial applications for free. So I will cover all of this within this video. I'll talk about some key syntax changes, whether or not you should upgrade, and what the difference is in licensing, if there's any difference at all, and what that means for you as a developer who wants to develop these applications with PyQt. Alright, so let's get started. First thing, let's actually recap. So we know that Qt is a framework. It was originally built for C++. It started off as a framer framework to build these graphical user interfaces, but it actually developed into so much more. It's a pretty complex and advanced framework. Now, PyQt is a Python binding for Qt. So this enables us to actually use Qt with Python. Now, PyQt5 works with Qt5, and PyQt6 only works with Qt6. So you should know this, that you cannot actually use PyQt6 with Qt5 or vice versa. You will need to use PyQt6 for Qt6 and PyQt5 for Qt5. Now, some syntax changes. It's actually worth mentioning that a lot of the syntax is pretty much the exact same. A lot of the tutorials I have on my channel, while they are for PyQt5, if you just substitute the PyQt5 imports with PyQt6 and just change maybe a few things here and there with the syntax, you could run the exact same applications. Some of them you don't even need to change anything for the syntax, you would just run it as is and you would get the same thing after changing the imports. So updating the code between the two frameworks is very straightforward. It's not troublesome at all. It's very easy for you to take any application written in PyQt5 and modify the code, just tweak it here and there, fix some errors, and then you would be good to go and run it in PyQt6 and maybe start releasing new versions of that application with PyQt6. However, Let's actually talk a bit about some of those key syntax changes. Now, there are many. You can actually go online into the Qt documentation. I'll add a link in the description. So you can go to the Qt documentation where they document every single change between Qt6 and Qt5. However, I'm going to highlight two of the very important and sort of very obvious changes that you will see as a developer that you will encounter the most because my channel is geared towards beginners and intermediates and these are probably the only two changes you will see when working with PyQt. All right, so first things first, and this is really the most important or maybe the most obvious, is the change between the exec function. So this is the function you need to execute your applications. What this function does is it creates an infinite loop or an event loop that will run so long as your application is running. So this is how applications usually work. So you would have to create an instance of a queue application you can see the example right here. Sometimes we pass the system arguments here between these two parentheses. And then now while here in PyQt5, you would say exec with the underscore. Actually, in PyQt6, you don't need an underscore. So this is a total typo on my end. It looks like this. So there is no underscore in PyQt6. Why? Because PyQt6 only supports Python 3 and not Python 2. So there is no more conflicts between the exec function built into Python. So now they are actually able to use this without the underscore. Now, the other major change that I would think of is the enums. So enums are usually used for different things within PyQt5. One of them is with checkboxes. So you can see this little to-do app or this little uh, checklist app that we created previously in one of my tutorials. If you go to that video, you will see that it was created with PyQt5. And then we used these three different examples here of these different flags. So we call them flags because this is how we set the different properties of these checklists. So when I set that this list view is item is user checkable, this means I'm enabling these checkboxes within my list view. And then I check for things like the state of each checkbox. I check whether it's checked or unchecked. And I do those using the Qt core module and I just call them using this, qtcore.qt.checked or .unchecked. 
Meanwhile, in PyQt6, you can no longer use the short name of an enum. You have to use the long name or the long form name. So here you have to write the entire name of the enum. So you can see here the difference is instead of just saying qt.item is user checkable, I say qt core .qt .item flag .item is user checkable. And there's a bunch of these changes. I put here three examples, but this basically goes for any enum in the PyQt module, you will see that in PyQt6, you have to use the long name. So be careful with that. Make sure you check that out, especially if you are using any enums within your application and you want to upgrade the version of your application. There were also a bunch of modules that were removed in PyQt6. So they are in PyQt5, but they are no longer in PyQt6. And here's a list of them. So you have the Qt multimedia widgets, Qt graphical effects, Qt purchasing, and so on. Most of these, I would say a beginner to intermediate is not usually exposed to, nor do they use it in their application. This is why I think it's not that major for you if you are somewhere between beginner and intermediate, or maybe even between intermediate and advanced, you will probably not use these. So this is why they were removed and they will no longer support these different modules. So finally, what should you really use? The thing is, is that they are so similar that it really doesn't matter at the end of the day. This depends on your own personal preference. Of course, at some point you will need to upgrade to PyQt6 because sooner or later this will be the main version of the framework and this will be the more developed one. So you will have to update sometime in the future. However, don't think that it is totally necessary at the moment because there aren't just that many changes. If you're still learning, maybe you could go for PyQt5 simply because there's just more tutorials out there and more answers on Stack Overflow, more documentation, more courses online if you go online and you buy courses, things like that. So you might find more of PyQt5. However, if you are a bit more advanced, you're able to actually just tweak the code, make it work for PyQt6, so this really shouldn't matter for you. So the final answer here is it depends on you, it depends on your preference. You can and should probably update to PyQt6, but it's also totally fine if you stick with PyQt5 for now, especially if you are a beginner. Finally, I just want to talk briefly about licensing. Both of these are under the GPL license, so the general public license. They are not actually totally free for commercial use. So there is a bit of conditions here that we need to talk about. Basically, what people usually have this misconception is that PyQt is not free at all and you would never be able to release an app if you use PyQt, the actual PyQt framework. However, you can but you would also have to share the source code with the users. So this license insists that users should have access to the source code of an application if the application is being released for free. However, if you want to keep the code closed source, you would need to actually go ahead and purchase a license from the company behind PyQt, which in this case is Riverbank Computing. You purchase a license from them and then you would be able to release your application for commercial purposes without having to actually share the source code. So this was a brief video just covering the main and key differences between these two frameworks. I hope this answers the question for a lot of you. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.